Hi. In this video, we'll talk about the five mental walls that you will hit while trying to get what you wanted. Also, we'll conclude the book summary by looking at the philosophical aspect of being stuck. Let's begin. Five mental walls. 1. Feeling rejected. Life has its ups and downs. When you go for what you want in life, ups and downs are exactly what you signed up for. And if you don't learn to ride the wave, the wave will crush you. When you hit an obstacle, you shouldn't be questioning yourself. You should just be figuring out the alternatives. You should be like water. Water doesn't reconsider its flow. If something gets in its way, it just moves around the obstacle. 2. Feeling overwhelmed. Half the anxiety you feel when you are overwhelmed is because you are not doing anything about it. But something happens at the moment you stop worrying and start doing. Action removes doubt. The moment you take stock of the situation and start actually doing something about it, you begin to feel better. You feel a sense of control returning to you. The key is to divide and conquer. If you have gotten yourself into a tight squeeze and you don't know how to make your next move, write down all your options. Break it down to a level where you can start listing things that you could do today. Now just pick one and get it done. 3. Feeling unmotivated If you feel distracted or unfocused, a lack of motivation is kicking in. This feeling comes from being disconnected with your own actions, which kicks off a vicious cycle of becoming even less motivated, which leads to taking less action. In other words, you don't feel motivated because you are not doing anything, and then you don't do anything because you are not motivated. If you are putting off action and waiting to feel motivated, you are never going to do anything because motivation comes from taking action. If you want to maintain your momentum, you need to remain vigilant against any kind of delay. Delaying is one of the primary tool resistance uses to keep you stuck. 4. Feeling like a fraud Everyone know what feeling like a fraud is like. You're trying your best and things might even be going well on the surface, but inside you're a mess. You have been eating healthy and working on what is needed, but you still feel fat and you feel as if you have no clue what you're doing. It happens to all of us, no matter how accomplished or successful we become. The moment you start feeling like a fraud, you need to reconnect with some of your most positive and successful friends and let them know that you are having a hard time aligning yourself with the discipline. Connecting with successful people lets you draft off their own personal momentum a little. A second advantage of getting out there and talking with people about your goals and setbacks is that even just discussing your efforts can help build momentum. 5. Feeling discouraged Becoming powerful is not a punishment. It's the discovery of something more past your resistance. If that means giving yourself few extra days to hit the target, then you give yourself that small amount of slack. Whatever it's going to take to let you stay with it. The point of pushing through is to teach yourself the reason for doing it again and again, not frightening you away further. That might mean dropping the jog into a brisk walk so you can keep luring yourself out there with the splendor of a fresh start every morning. That might mean allowing yourself a little more time to come up with your business plan so you have time to let the creative process unfold. Notice I did not say cut down the number of morning jogs, just the speed and the mileage. Notice I did not say take a few nights off when you are drawing up that business plan. Notice I did not say reward yourself just because you did something supposedly difficult. I am not talking about training yourself like some sort of puppy dog. You cannot let down your guard to the real dangers of inertia. Conclusion When you look at the most philosophical aspect of being stuck, there are really two basic concepts that cut to the heart of it. These are the struggles that occupy everyone throughout his or her life. These two struggles are ownership and challenge. Ownership. Do you own your life or are you just playing by someone else's rules? If you don't own or accept the everyday occurrences in your day, you will begin to feel a distance from your own life. A feeling of control is essential to your mental health. 
if you start feeling as if you are not in the driver's seat and the conditions of your life cannot be controlled by your own actions when things go wrong you quickly start to enter into a negative spiral known as learned helplessness under these conditions people quickly give up trying to fight you say why bother it is what it is or it's not so bad you convince yourself that it is not worth the effort challenge are you doing something that you think is cool everyone knows that challenges lead to growth but knowing and doing is different you might know that it is better to take the stairs but when was the last time you skipped an elevator ride you might know that learning is a lifetime challenge but when was the last time you really tried to study something new like everyone else when you reached adulthood you discovered that you had acquired some real freedom you could do what you wanted and no one was going to give you a hard time freedom is not doing anything you want freedom is doing what is needed joyfully if you want to watch more book summary videos a book every week please let me know by subscribing to the channel thank you very much